In the conflict in Afghanistan, like in most wars, it's sometimes difficult, if not impossible, to see clearly what is happening and why. The first casualty of war, they say, is the truth. Away from the bombs and the bullets, there is another war being fought here, that of propaganda. The winning of hearts and minds, each side bombards the people with their message of success. We're having many successes against the terrorists. We're killing many. The Afghan forces with their allies are getting stronger. People are skeptical that they're being given the true casualty figures and whether the successes are as successful as both sides claim. War zones are breeding grounds for fake news. If you really look at it from the neutral perspective, um, I think both of them are, are trying to hype whatever they're doing. And, and in reality, um, they are quite far from, from reality. It's always been hard for many Afghans, especially those who are educated, to believe everything they're being told. In this murky world of warlords, corrupts, military officials and politicians, and shady profiteering businessmen, people here long ago lost trust. But it's not just distrust of their own. For 16 years, the US has given Afghanistan support and promises. Visiting troops in December, American Vice President Mike Pence made a declaration. I believe victory is closer than ever before. General John Nicholson, head of US and NATO forces in Afghanistan, says they are on course to win. He is the eighth US commander to claim victory was in sight. So far, the Afghan campaign has cost America a trillion dollars and 2,400 lives. In the propaganda war, the Taliban is not an amateur. The group has professional websites in multiple languages, uses Twitter and other social media, pumping out its message 24 hours a day. Suicide attacks are choreographed with media in mind. Telecommunication uh, internet is, the penetration rate in Afghanistan is, is getting higher and higher day by day, not just in urban Afghanistan, but also in rural Afghanistan. Um, so, so it might sort of help them in, in, recruit, in recruiting new officers and recruiting recruitment of new um, uh, fighters and, and conveying the message to their audiences. Uh, I think it's, it's quite effective, absolutely. Media in Afghanistan are said to be flourishing and independent, but they're now on the front line of the propaganda war. Last year, 21 journalists were killed doing their job. Afghan media, uh, certainly one of the success stories of the past 17 years, is paying a very high price for, for telling the truth, for giving the Afghan people the voice they deserve. Hasib Sadat is a cameraman who suffered eye damage when a Taliban suicide bomber targeted their vehicle. Seven colleagues died in the blast. Every time I go out, I'm scared. My family want me to stop, but I need the job. Many don't have work, so I have no choice, but it's a risk. The true story of this war can be seen in the hospital wards and graveyards across the country. To date, hundreds of thousands of people, most of them civilians, have been killed and wounded in 40 years of conflict. That in itself is almost unbelievable. Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Kabul.